the two shades of lipstick were identical, which means that only you, Mademoiselle Brown, could have placed a cigarette case underneath the body. Surely, Monsieur Varon, you're, you're not accusing me of murder. Indeed I am, Mademoiselle. Murder of the most treacherous and the most ingenious. Oh, heavens. Surely you can't mean that, Varon. It is of the most regrettable that I do. Is this true, Susan? Yes, Freddy. I'm very much afraid that it is. Yes, I did kill Lord Carnington. My God, Varon, she's doing the evil voice. Indeed, <laughs> I always know I have got some when they start doing the evil voice. What? Yes. Once again, I had no evidence. It has been a hell of a week, to be honest with you. But once they have done the evil voice, you know it is the murderer. No! No! I really don't know how this could have happened, Monsieur Voron. No, no, too late. We've all heard you do the evil voice. Only murderers do that. Oh, but Monsieur Voron, I implore you. Too late, mademoiselle. The evil voice, it never lies. And besides, now you are smoking a cigarette out of an evil cigarette holder. Damn you, Voron. She's doing it again. Yes, and she has become sexier. <laughs> Now she has evil lipstick and her hair is going evil. I'm not sorry, damn you. I'd do it again. Attention, mon capitaine. In a moment, she will kiss that guy and then try to kill herself. Right. Susan, I don't understand. Oh, Freddy. Could have been so perfect if you weren't such a fool. Have her tits just got bigger? <laughs> this can happen. Goodbye, Freddy. Ooh, now then, is this the bit where... Oui? Susan! It is better this way. Some courts say do not accept the evil voice as evidence. Oh, well, that's a bit of luck, then. And now, Monsieur Freddy, I wonder if I could trouble yes, you. Yes, I did do that massive poo in your ensuite while you were out. <laughs> what? No, Monsieur. And I'd do it again, damn you. Whether or not it flushed. <laughs> uh, no, I was just going to ask you to pass me my hat. <laughs> oh. Well, Edward, thanks for a lovely evening. Oh, there was that book I was going to lend you, wasn't there? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Where is it? Uh... <laughs> oh, look, don't worry about it. No, 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 no. Ago, I personally painted it the flank pattern system for finding books on shelves. Oh, there it is. It worked for Edward, and it could work for you, too. For over 30 years now, Jan Hankel has been showing the world how his patented flank pad system can help all of us to focus our minds and achieve our goals, particularly when looking for a book. 30 years ago, I am nobody. Then I painted the Hankel flam pan system. <laughs> Unlike that, I am Jan Hankel. You know? We know. <laughs> Only the patented flank pad system is like having Jan Hankel himself with you in the room, guiding you step by step through this unique course of self betterment and achievement ship. And here are just some of the famous names who have personally testified to Jan Hankel's patent flank pad system. Will Flan. And what I love about the Hankel Pantyplanty Flank Pad, and what so many people love about the Hankel Panty Planty Plank Pad, is that it's not just for books, you know? People are using the system worldwide for so much, 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 much more. Finding keys. <laughs> Jigsaw pieces. Earthquake survivors. <laughs> Send off of my Yan Pankel Dangle flat back today, and I will also send you this Yan Hankel Scissor System. <laughs> Hankel's new patent system for finding scissors in the kitchen. <laughs> the sales task is over, and both teams have made massive profits with their sensible ideas.
So, well done everyone. Uh, unfortunately, the format requires that one of you be fired. Obviously, that's a complete departure from what would really happen. I wouldn't be a millionaire if I fired a 15th of my workforce every week. <laughs> um, just to help me out, d does anyone want to pointlessly lie or try and take credit for something they didn't do? No. Worth a try. Um, OK, I'll, I'll fire the fat one. <laughs> You can see it's just not working. It's a shame. I thought it'd be interesting to watch talented business people competing for a prestigious job. I wonder, maybe that's the problem. Go on. Well, how would it be if instead it was idiots competing for a relatively junior job? Idiots. Yeah. We deliberately pick 16 idiots, real idiots, arseholes as well, and then we get to watch them screw everything up. It'll be brilliant. So it's coverage of idiots behaving idiotically for an audience of idiots. Well, not just an audience of idiots. There'll be a lot of other people who flatter themselves they're watching with a sense of irony and in some way haven't been taken in. And remind me, how do these ironic non-idiots show up in the ratings? They show up the same, my friend. They show up just the same. <laughs> You're watching the British Emergency Broadcasting System. The estimated date is March or November 2013. It's 19 hours. So now, as usual, it's time for the quiz broadcast. Hello, good evening, and remain indoors. <laughs> this is the quiz broadcast, coming to you every Friday, the same day as your food parcels. <laughs> so chow down on a protein fudge, take whatever injections are recommended in your sector, and prepare to enjoy the show! <laughs> Well, it's between 600 and 750 days since the event, but that hasn't stopped those of us that survive from enjoying ourselves. So let's remain indoors and say hello to our contestants. Hi there. Hello. Hey. <sighs> That's the spirit, unknown male 282. <laughs> so let's get on with the game. First round, things. Fingers on buzzers. What is believed to be the name of this pre-event leader? Uh, Heston Blumenthal? Correct. <laughs> Multiple choice. Which of Shakespeare's three plays is now thought to be prophetic of the event? Is it A, Pericles, B, Cymbeline, or C, Boeing Boeing? Is it a trick question? It is. <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear, some horrible memory from the event, no doubt. We all get them. Yes, indeed. By night, we all get them. <laughs> Please, everyone, remain indoors. <laughs> so while Sheila's being electrocured, let's see what Peter's won. <laughs> That's right. It's fuel. Oh, Lionel, glad you could make it. Can I get you a drink? Yeah, something soft. I'm driving. Parking's an absolute nightmare around here, isn't it? I have to reverse into the tiniest of spaces. Still, I managed it. I mean, parking's not exactly brain surgery, is it? <laughs> and I should know. Why is that? Are you a doctor? Careful. Not a doctor. I'm a brain surgeon. Big difference. Big difference. Yeah, I actually know a joke about this. What's the difference between a doctor and a brain surgeon? One's not exactly brain surgery. The other is brain surgery. <laughs> So, uh, what do you guys do? I'm an accountant. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I could do with an accountant. Filling in those tax forms can get really confusing, can't it? Still, it's not exactly brain surgery, is it? <laughs> I mean, brain surgery, believe me, is very complex. Are you an accountant too? Uh, no, I work for a charity. Oh, that's a very selfless job, isn't it? I really admire you. I don't think I could ever do what you do. I say that because it's emotionally draining, not because it's hard. I mean, it's not exactly brain surgery, is it? Which, as a brain surgeon, is what I do. Lionel, here's your drink. Lionel's a brain surgeon, you know. <laughs> yeah, he mentioned it. Oh, 
Jeff, they keep you late at the Space Centre. As always. And this food round. Have you met Lionel? Uh, no, hello, Lionel. So, Jeff, how do you earn a crust? Uh, oh, I'm a scientist. I, I work mainly with rockets. It's, <laughs> it's, um, it's pretty tough work. Um, what do you do? Why, I don't mean to boast, but uh, I'm a brain surgeon. Brain surgery? <laughs> Oh, he's actually rocket science. Isn't he? <laughs> They've arrived. Oh, great, thanks. What are those? It's the new Mitchell and Webb action figure prototypes. <laughs> Nobody told me we were doing those. Oh, they're brilliant. The toy manufacturers have taken the essence of our personalities and reduced them down to a one-eighth scale doll. <laughs> Talking David Mitchell doll. Special features. David has a 28,000-word vocabulary in three different settings. Trenchant wit, articulate outrage, or quickfire panel show mode. Thank you for that spectacularly banal contribution to proceedings. What are my special features? Um, it says you come with a spare T-shirt. A spare T-shirt? Bloody hell, is that it? <laughs> I think you've got a, a talking thing, too. Bloody hell, is that it? <laughs> See, Rob, they're absolutely meticulous in their research. <laughs> oh, look. I'm anatomically correct. I'm not. Just got plastic underpants. Wow, they really are thorough, aren't they? <laughs> see me, sir? Ah, yes. Come in, Hennemore. I've got rather an important job for you. Oh, dear, sir. As you'll be aware, my best and oldest friend, Jock, is coming in this afternoon and we're to have a round of golf. Now, I'll be in a meeting until four, so when he arrives at half three, I want you to show him in here, tell him to make himself comfortable, and invite him to inspect my newly acquired set of antique golf clubs once used by Edward VII. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Got it, sir. Edward VII. One important thing to remember is that Jock is a recovering alcoholic, and at this stage in his rehabilitation, it is absolutely vital that on no account should he get even the slightest whiff of liquor. Right you are, sir. He was an extremely violent drunk in his day, Hennemore, and bitterly obsessed with his failure to break through as a golf pro, an eventuality which, when in his cups, he lays squarely at the door of American golfer Jack Nicklaus. Oh, right, sir. On an unrelated note, my wife has just sent me this rather handsome and handsomely stocked drinks cabinet, exactly in the shape of a set of Edwardian golf clubs. Oh, that's nice, sir. Isn't it? Now, you've probably already thought of this, but on no account should you show the fully stocked drinks cabinet to the violent alcoholic Scotsman instead of the set of golf clubs. Absolutely, sir. OK, well, I'll just pop them both on this lazy Susan for now. <laughs> And remember, I don't want any screw-ups like last time. It's been a difficult year for transcosmic corridors, and the last thing we need is any kind of fracas. Don't you worry about it, sir. This, Your Majesty, is the linden tree, which has long stood as a symbol of the loyalty and strength of our people. It is our hope that as a token of friendship between our two countries, Your Majesty will accept the gift of 20,000 such linden trees to be planted <laughs> throughout your kingdom's many public parks and spaces. As gentle sentinels, proffering in the heat of the summer sun, both shade to your busy citizens and the linden's sweet, distinctive scent. Ambassador, we thank you. And it is a most distinctive scent. <laughs> Prime Minister, may we have a word? Excuse us, Ambassador. <laughs> Your Majesty? Can you smell cum? <laughs> what? Can you smell cum? There's an incredibly strong smell of cum. Your Majesty, 
I was wondering if it might be the tree. It's not you, is it? No, it is not me, Your Majesty. But uh, I don't really... Uh, I mean, I, I can't say I really smell... Oh, you must be able to. It's potent. Stop! <laughs> your Majesty, stop this now! I beg your pardon. I apologise, Your Majesty, but the whole tenor of this conversation is completely out of keeping with contemporary mores. What do you mean? It's not Victorian. That's a perfectly valid observation. Look at the funny wheels on that penny farthing is a perfectly valid observation for <laughs> Victorian, Your Majesty. Don't linden trees smell like cum? Conversely, it's the sky falling in on our heads. But, Minister, do you know how hot I am? Under this hat, with this beard, this big Victorian beard, Your Majesty, I am boiling. I am covered in starch, and I am boiling, and I can barely move at home for little vases on stands or portraits of ill children praying. And what has been the point? What really has been the point of the last 50 years of my being a Victorian if Queen Victoria herself is suddenly going to sidle over and ask me, can I smell cum? <laughs> well, I have to say something. You do not. You do not. You are Queen Victoria. This society was your idea. I am boiling, and you will say nothing. Not to me, and not to the ambassador. You say that? No. Prime Minister, either one of us says something now, or from this day forward, every single park, every single summer, is going to smell of cum. Well, just going to have to smell of cum, then. Fine. I've cracked it. Cracked what? I've finally rendered the doorbell obsolete. This is a drawing of a dog being fired out of a cannon. Exactly. You simply fire the dog from a cannon through the window of the house you wish to visit. And that's better than a doorbell because... You attach a note to the dog's face. Say goodbye to those irritating who's that ringing the doorbell scenarios. You simply write your name and the purpose of your visit on the note, attach the note to the dog's face, fire the dog through the window of the house you wish to visit, and hey presto, the residents immediately know who you are and what you want. OK, I can see the advantages of knowing who's at the door before you answer it. I'm a genius. But I think the positives may be outweighed by the negatives. There are no negatives. Except for a broken window, a dead or severely injured dog, the need to carry a large cannon around with you, not to mention the possibility that you're intending to visit several houses and will therefore need to carry several dogs. No, that's the beauty of this invention. You can reuse the same dog. I've never shot a dog through a window, but I'll bet it causes quite a few lacerations. Eventually, you'll need to replace the dog. Keyword, eventually. I estimate you could shoot the same dog through 24 windows before it becomes a terrifying lump of mutilated flesh. You're mad. Am I mad, or am I simply ahead of my time? You're mad. Oh, fine. But when I'm fated as the man who finally ended the world's reliance on doorbells, don't shoot a dog through my window with a note begging for forgiveness. about espionage it's it's about the people and how they interact yeah you can't really research this spy drama because it's all secret i mean that's the one thing that's you know not secret was yours a strawberry cheesecake yeah so you did no research at all well does watching octopussy count Last week on Undercover Secret Spies. Here's the secret document. Shh. Probably in Spy HQ. Yes, but we could still be being spied on. Even in here? That is so complicated. <laughs> that message you intercepted? I can't read it. It's gobbledygook. My God, they must be using code. Code? Shh. I'll get the code book. Meanwhile, a good one is for you to assume that each letter is one letter up in the alphabet. What, A is B, B is C, and so forth? That blows my mind! So, you're a rookie spy. 
New to the world of remembering not to tell people your job at parties. I might be. You're good. I see you've brought newspaper and scissors. Check. Well, start cutting eye holes. <laughs> but uh, we should make it. <laughs> All right, Brian, how's it going? Russ, what are you doing here? Huh, that's nice. Great to see you too. Well, no, of course, we're, we're always happy to see you, aren't we, Mrs. Claus? I'll get you a drink. <laughs> so, uh... How's the new festival going? What, what was it called? Winterfest? Winterfest X, or Extremus. Yeah, paperwork's not finalised yet, but yeah, it's very exciting. Oh, well, that, that's wonderful, Russ. Because, you know, nobody's ever done a combined extreme sports and end-of-the-year festival before. Yeah, it's going to be huge. And the money, yeah, it's going to make your Christmas look like chicken feed. Oh, well, you, you know, I, I don't do it for the money. Yeah, well, uh, that was why I was thinking of giving you the opportunity to get involved in my gig. No, no, no. I, I wouldn't want to intrude. I'm, I'm happy with my old-fashioned Christmas. I, I think I'll leave the innovation to you. I'm not talking about a lot of work, you know. Maybe just a bit of equity to help with the cash flow until ticket sales pick up. Perhaps an endorsement. Uh, Raz, I, I can't. Of course you fucking can! <laughs> Why do you think Winterfest X isn't taking off? It's because Christmas is screwing us! Well, I, I did suggest at the time that you tried to do more of a summer event. Hey, don't you bloody do that. You owe me big time, Santa. If I go under again, it'll be on your head. But I, I thought it was going well. It's all gone to crap. All the sponsors are pulled out. But what about the big tour bus and, and all those hotel conferences? How could you afford...? Nah, it's all on credit cards. I'm in the hole for 40 grand. You've got to help me. I don't have that kind of money. I, I mean, if, if, if you're looking for work, I, I could offer you a job. Oh, Christ, no. Don't put me on the line. Not with the elves. A job is a job, Rex, and besides, it'll be fun. We, we've got some wonderful new toys this year, some really nice stuff. I'll get some samples from the workshop. Two minutes. Sir Joyce, how's it been? How can you do this? How can you just come back into our lives like this after everything that happened? Come on, Joyce. You swore. You swore if I got rid of it, you'd never come back. Maybe I couldn't stay away. Ross, I can't do this to him again. Not now, it's his busiest time of year. He's been neglecting you, Joyce. Working all hours, flying off all over the world. I don't mind, it's his job. Oh, but you do mind. You're a woman, Joyce. A beautiful, sexual woman. And you know what? You better watch out. <laughs> You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Russ, please. Russ closes <laughs> to town. You're poison. Now, have a look at these little. <laughs> Joyce! Russ, wh what are you. Uh, Joyce wasn't feeling well. She. How can I have been so blind? <laughs> Rudolph, no, don't come in here! <laughs> How long has this been going on? For as long as you've been ignoring her needs. Oh, 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 God! <laughs> this is why you wanted to have the... It wasn't mine, was it? It wasn't mine. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Look, I know this is a shock, but what's happened has happened. We're a family, that's what matters, yeah? So come on, let's just get through Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> 